Anchor Television, brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter, Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. Coldwell Banker, every day until it's sold. St. Croix Ride, best rides on earth. Evan Rude, spend more time on the water. Good morning. Welcome to Fishful Tanker. I'm Chad Lachance, and once again, we appreciate you joining us. Right here on the ice with me, Mr. Ronnie Castiglione. If you're a fan of the show, you probably heard about Ronnie a little bit. He's done some fly tying for us, some jigs, produced some jigs for us, some things like that. Well, we finally got Ronnie out to actually be on the show, and we appreciate you joining us. It's good to be here, Chad. It should be fun. If you're also a fan of the show, you'll know that we don't do a lot of ice fishing and dealing with six inch holes and two foot poles is something that's pretty new to me. Now we did a, we did a show up at Granby with Bernie Keefe and we caught some lake trout and I got kind of a, an intro to ice fishing that way. We, we also went out on Chatfield with Nathan Zelinski and caught some smallmouth. Well, this is gonna be a very basic ice fishing show. We've got a hand auger, we've got no shelter, we've got no electronics. We're gonna do some basic jigging using Berkeley Gulp products, and we're gonna see if we can catch some average trout. This is not gonna be trophy fishing. It's gonna be Ronnie and I out here to see what we can come up with just very average stuff. So if you're thinking about getting into ice fishing, this is gonna be the kind of show you wanna watch. If you're a straight expert, hopefully you'll find some entertainment value, but more importantly, we really wanna instill some confidence in folks to come out and do it. So. It's cold, it's windy, you think we can catch some fish? I think we're going to catch a bunch of fish. That sounds good. Confidence catches more fish than anything else. Stay tuned, get comfortable, this should be fun. All right, so we've climbed out of the nice warm tundra and we're headed back out on the ice. We kind of went out and did a little looking around, now we're going to go out and do some fishing. But first we want to tell you a little bit about some of the baits that we're going to try today. Bottom line, first and foremost, we're going to start off with a gulp minnow. Ronnie and I talked about this a lot. He fishes a ton of gulp minnows, and obviously I fish a ton of gulp minnows as well. We're going to try to get him to go on a standard two and a half inch gulp minnow. We're going to put that on a 16th ounce jig head. This is, happens to be a lunker grip jig head. It holds gulp very well, and that's what we're really going to try to catch him with. In the event that that doesn't pan out for us, We've got some one inch gold minnows that are here available in the jar. The one inch minnow is a little bit smaller, a little bit more traditional, and we'll pair that with a little bit smaller and more traditional tiny little ice jig. And uh, this jig happens to be a 30 seconds of an ounce, real bright color, very common ice jig. So I don't think we're going to need live bait to catch fish today. In fact, we don't have any with us, so we better not need any live bait or we're going to be in exactly. trouble. The gulp should get it done. It normally does, and I do believe it will here as well. So we're going ice fishing, and it's very, very basic. And Ronnie and I have come out here with minimal equipment. you got to have some basic stuff. Fundamentally, you got to have an auger. We've got a six-inch auger. You have a lot more experience with augers than I do. Six-inch, eight-inch, ten-inch, what's, what's the deal? Um, on a lake like this, we're dealing with relatively small fish. Uh, the six inch hole, if we catch anything that's too big to come through the six inch hole, it's a miracle. It's our lucky day. It's a miracle. The six inch hole is probably um, easier to drill as well. It's a lot easier to drill. You're going to be able to power through the through the ice a lot faster. Now besides the auger, a little scoop here. Show us the scoop here just for getting ice out of the hole. Got to have that. Basic, basic tool. This happens to be a collapsible one which is nice so you don't have to bend over to do it but you just uh, you got to keep your ice holes clean. clean. The hole. You can see here it Ronnie's got some cleats on his boots. Really important if the wind blows all the snow off of here. Really important. Ice can get really slick. It can get slick fast. Uh, even on a day like today where there's just a little bit of powder on top of the ice, uh, the sun's liable to melt the ice and you're liable to take a fall. A couple other things, not just for ice fishing. Great polarized sunglasses. Got to have them. Ronnie wears glasses, so he's wearing a fit over style. I've got my standard Costas on. Uh, blue mirror, great for on the ice. Got to protect your eyes from the glare coming off this ice. Key things, not a ton of equipment for ice fishing, but those key things will get you started. So here we go. <laughs> We're the Fishful Thinkers, first time ice fishing in the most traditional of methods. We've got Ronnie setting up over here a float with a twin rig. We drilled a series of holes from shallow to deep water, which I learned from fishing with Nathan Zelinski. It's a good way to, to work your way out and figure out what depth the fish are at. We have no idea. We just got here and haven't even put a bait in the water yet. Ronnie's fished here, uh, what, two times in the past, but that's it. And so we really don't have a lot of experience. So we'll work some depth ranges. So here we go, my first drop. I've got a 16th ounce jig head and a two and a half inch gulp minnow. 
You've seen it on the show a million times. Everybody eats the gulp minnow. So we're going to drop it down this hole and see what happens. Just got here. We've been at the lake for a uh, grand total of about 10 minutes. So we'll see what happens. I've got a six pound test fire line. I've got, uh, I've got a little 28 inch St. Croix rod and a 16th ounce jig head. So we'll see what happens. As always, when we're fishing the fire line, we've got a little, a little leader on there. And uh, that's just for visibility. Look at him just chewing on that minnow. But I'm waiting until somebody actually pulls on it rather than just chewing on it. Got him. There we go. All right, now first drop, new lake. New thing all together and Troutski. Ta da! <laughs> well, I want to give Ronnie, Ronnie some props right there. Now, uh, <laughs> that was hard. I got a fish going over here too. He's got now. one already on that one too. Fast and furious. Now, again, I'm not expecting us to catch huge fish today. There's a very average rainbow trout, and we're going to put him back in the hole. But there you go. There's a very average stock of rainbow trout. Anywhere in the western United States, they stock these by the ton. We're going to go ahead and slide him back in the hole. I'm thinking we can catch more of them. That wasn't too hard, was it? But there you go. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's the first hole we drilled, or the first, first drop bait we've dropped, and we just ran a set of holes out here, dropped the gulp minnow down. I've said it a million times. Everybody eats a gulp minnow. Doesn't matter, apparently, whether it's frozen water, fresh water, or salt water. Good stuff. <laughs> the deal is, you, you miss a fish. If you just let it fall right back to them, right. they'll come right back and they'll get it again. Which is often the case with any jigging. Once it, they get a taste of that gulp, until you, you know, pin a hook in them good. I mean, look, he's back. He wants it. He's just, he's... Let him down. So you, is the whole deal you're going to let him pull that thing all the way under or what? Yeah, you know, they'll nibble, they'll nibble, they'll nibble, and then you'll see a, a like a steady movement of that, of that bobber. Once it starts to pull away, or even if it lays flat, meaning the fish is, is, is taking it up. Right. If it lays flat or starts to swim or starts to pull away at more of a steady motion like, like that. that. Yeah, there you go. I then saw you, that. Then you pin him. Oh, and he came undone, which right. is going to happen. There he is again. I got him that time. All right. Now, look more there and check out what you got here. I'm just going to set this down and come see what you got. So, well, that looks a lot like the other one. It does. <laughs> All right, so we've got the slip by. That's a little bigger one there. Oh, Let's there pull him go. up and check him out there. Oh, nice. He got a hold of your your bait. Now get out of your way here. And he's taking the drop shot hook. Oh uh, yeah, he took. Okay, so looks like it's a cut bow too. So. And you got him hooked up really good. Now what Ronnie's got going here is he's got a drop shot. If you if if you've ever heard of a drop shot rig, basically he's got a weight on the bottom and a hook above it, as opposed to the other way around. And got a cut bow on that one. Hold him up. Let's look at him. That's a pretty fish right there. Not bad. We should catch lots of those today. Cool. You can put him back and we'll, we'll look, talk about this rig. If you look here, there's a jig on the bottom and then a drop shot hook up above it right here with it's got another gulp minnow. Same bait on both of them, but it basically gets you in two depth ranges. Really good trick. You've got a swivel above it swivel. to keep the line twist down. Fluorocarbon leader. The Trying 100% fluorocarbon leader. Fireline Crystal Ice? Yes, sir. Four pound test. Four pound test. And then a little, this is a kind of a custom bobber. Now you're drilling these. Tell me quick, what's that bobber all about? This is a basic uh, slip bobber okay. that you can buy at Sportsman's Warehouse. Um, I've modified it. I've drilled a hole sideways. Through the base of it. Through right? the base of it. Usually the line will run through the top, down through it like this. I've drilled a hole straight through with a small little drill bit through the bottom part of it. And what that does is it puts the line under the water. And so it so won't freeze, freeze up and you won't have those issues. When you're sure. fishing a float like this through the ice, you get ice buildup up on the top of it. Sure, that makes sense. And so this thing just runs up and down like that. I got a bead right here on top of it. And then in the line here, there is a, a, a thread stop. Yeah, a bobber stop. And you set that to your depth. Once you figure that out, you lure this little bad boy down and you let it basically fish it itself. There you go. You know, it worked good that time. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, it tends to. There, see, he's got it that time, but he's missed it again. So I'm gonna let it fall right back to him. Just slack line, let it fall, let it fall. He's already nibbling. I, don't, I can already tell he's back nibbling again. There, he's got it, he's swimming. And I pinned and him that you time. you stuck him that time, nice. So it's looking like, a, a, you know, we always try to establish a pattern and it's, I, I don't see why ice fishing would be any different. Not that I'm any ice fishing expert, 
uh, because obviously I'm not, but the concept of, uh, of a pattern I think is rel regardless of whether you're ice fishing or not. Now that's a nicer one too. And did he eat the, no, he ate the jig on the bottom. And I have so one, pull I have one up. on this too. Okay, you got one on that one too? Yeah. Okay, so you deal with this one, I'll go deal with that one. <laughs> so deal with that one, there's and, fish uh, on that one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We got another one over here. Now, obviously the dead stick rods are the deal. And I got this stuck on the ice. And it... Huh, I don't know what you got going on over here, dude, but it ain't a trout. You know what, I've got that line snagged on this one. Oh, there you go. Which is what happened. Hey, you fight good, dude. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, this is how you make blooper reels yeah. right here, is what you do is you drill your holes close together, and then you let the fish eat one jig and then swim over and eat the other jig. Nice job, Ronnie. <laughs> that's a little chunkier one there. That's yeah, a pretty fish. That's not a bad fish for here in uh, Dowdy. And I guess we haven't even said where we are, but we're actually on Dowdy Lake in, in Colorado. I'm finding that getting the feel of setting the hook on these little rods takes some getting used to. And if you saw the show we did up at, at uh, Granby with Dan Swanson, another regular guest here on Fishful Thinker, and, uh, and Bernie Keefe. The, the trick of setting those lake trout up uh, took me some getting used to with the little tiny rod. Now here's a fish messing with it right here. I got him that time. Nice All right, time. now. Yeah, we got some pull on my little St. Croix right now. There you go. <laughs> I have to admit, growing up in South Florida, I, I never really envisioned myself fishing through a hole in the ice. Uh, but I'm having a good time doing it, and it's much simpler than I would have thought it would be. And there we go, we got another one, the, the little goat minnow strikes again. Now one of the things guys were just talking about while Ronnie's fighting yet another dowdy monster. He's a giant. <laughs> now He's a giant. I think it's important to point out guys that's that we, nice we've been fishing, that's not bad. We've been fishing for a grand total of about 10 minutes at this point, and, uh, and we're up to, I think that's our fifth fish. We walked out on the ice, drilled holes, and started fishing. And uh, is it always going to be that easy? Maybe not. But if you pick your location out right, it could be. Hey, eh, Ronnie? Yeah, it, uh, it can be an easy deal. Um, I've got another one going here now. And he had it, and it looks like he's let it go, but he'll probably come back there and get it. There he goes, it. pulling it under the ice even. And once there he gets you a go, steady got pull, him. Oh, did you miss him? I, I thought you him, had it. What I'll do is I'll just let it fall right straight back. He's already messing with it. I can already it see the bobber twitching. It didn't even pull the line twitching. back tight again, and he's already Yeah, I can it. already see the bobber twitching, which tells me he's on it again. And uh, we'll just kind of wait here for a second and see if he's going to commit to it. Now, patience with the hook setting is apparently a critical part of this whole situation. With the float, it really is. And uh, the float allows you, you know, to, to leave the bait where it is. And the beauty of the slip bobber, too, is that you can, you can also work that jig and that, uh, that drop shot minnow um, with the slip bobber as well. You don't have to just let it sit dead. Right. Um, so a lot of times, fish will come in, they'll bite it, they'll mess around with it. Um, like this. Like that. Oh, you got that one. That <laughs> one just choked it. Yeah, that was pretty easy right there. Now, I may not be an ice fishing expert, but even I could see that one. There's a little better one there, too. That's not a bad one. Here we go. See if we can bang a double right here. Oh, did I get him? Yeah, I got mine, too. So we'll get us a double working right now. Oh, mine. Yeah, he's still on there. He's coming up quick. Oh, look, I got a little brown trout. Nice. Look, I'll bring him over here. Nice. There you go. Now, now again, I may not be any expert ice fisherman, but I'm finding quickly that it isn't very hard. That last fish I hooked, I've been, I was snapping the bait like this, and my theory is this, and I kind of learned some of it from Nate Zielinski and some of it from fishing open water. Is, uh, the movement of the bait will attract fish that may not be sitting right there. It, they're moving around here, they're roaming around in packs, and, uh, and so getting the, the bait to snap jig a little bit like that, can sometimes get them to come find your bait. And that's, uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing. They're biting it on the drop, but I just snap it up and down and it gets them to trigger on it. And then they come find it and boom, you got them. Now the dead stick rig on the minnow is the opposite. Now this is a little bit better one. Got it right on the tip of the snoot. Real, real simple. Easy there, buddy. And we'll get you put back. We'll show you to the camera, make you famous. There's a famous Bobo. A magnificent rainbow trout right there. Division Wildlife stocks lots of them. That one's got nice color on them. Slimer. It's a slimer right there. All right. Got him that time. There we go. And this might be day one of Chad's ice fishing adventure. But 
I'm finding out that fishing's fishing. <laughs> fishing is fishing. Look, you can see them down in the hole right here as they flash around down there. I kind of wish there wasn't any snow on the ice. It's kind of cool looking to see them flashing around underneath there. And he's coming out, and there we got him right there, right in the corner of the mouth. Little goat minnow getting her done today. It's no secret that ice fishing is gaining in popularity, and for good reason. Lots of fish are caught through the ice every year, and in fact, it's more productive often than open water fishing. But an angler needs to keep in mind safety at all times when you're on the ice, and a couple of basic items will help you with that. One of the most important things, certainly on very slick ice, which we find earlier in the season or when there's been a freeze thaw, is a pair of grips for your boots. Now there's a whole variety of them out there. This kind is a rubber slip-on goes over your boots, but these metal cleats will give you traction on the ice. The last thing you wanna do is fall down when you're on the lake. Another very important thing, particularly if you fall through the ice, is a pair of ice picks like this. These will allow an angler to stick them in the ice and drag yourself up should you fall through the ice. A safety rope is another great item to have as well. If you prepare for safety when you're going out in the ice, not only will you have more fun, but you'll probably catch more fish. I got my minnow twisted up. Now one of the things I can't stress, it's important, if you see the tail of that minnow is twisted on there now. If your gulp minnow is not rigged straight on your jig, you're not going to catch as many fish. You're going to have twisted line, you're going to have tangles, you're not going to get the fish catching you want done. That minnow needs to be straight. This one's already caught at least a half dozen fish. The minnow's chewed up. I don't care. The fish don't care. I can keep it dropping in the hole and keep catching fish, but if it's rigged crooked or it won't stay on the hook, take it off and replace it or you're wasting your time. And what we're doing is we're basically doing some hole hopping right here, which it seems like that I learned fishing with both Nathan Zelensky and Bernie Keefe, both of which are professional lake or uh, ice fishing guides. The hole hopping deal is basically a series of holes and moving back and forth from hole to hole rather than sitting on one hole for a whole long time. Part of that is being mobile. All right, we got one going here, Chad. All right, let me come look there. Since there seems to be plenty to go around, I'm gonna come over there and check out your fish. What you got going on there? That bobber rig, now we've, oh, he's still on it. You can see the drop mm -hmm. shot, now that's a nice one there. Look at the color on that one. And this one took the jig on the bottom. There you go, and that's, I, I, that's I, one of the nice ones we've caught too. There you go, buddy. I'll hold your rod for you. And one thing I always, you talk about building patterns. Um, I try to pay attention to which one of these I get the most fish on throughout a day. Sure. Some days it's this bottom jig, some days it's the drop shot one. Um, some days it's a, a little bit of both, like today, you know. It doesn't really seem to be that they prefer one or the other. But this is a beautiful fish. Yeah, that's a nice fish for here. You got him right in the top of the snoot, just like you mm -hmm. want. Perfect little setup right there. Right yeah, there. nice fish, Mr. Ronnie. I like that. There you go. And away you beautiful. go. Beautiful. Well done, sir. Thank you, sir. I think uh, the action we got going on today, it's uh, some high five would be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so I changed up a little bit, and I only changed up because I wanted to. So now I've got a little bit lighter rod. I've got four pound test, and I've got a four pound test leader. And what I got on here is a more traditional ice fishing deal. I've got a little tiny pink jig head, and now I've got a one inch gulp minnow. I've got the tiny little gulp minnow, and lo and behold, it works just as good as the big gold minnow. That's the first time I dropped it in the hole. Um, very, very simple. Go right there now. <laughs> we got that rod going. We got this rod going. This is the little one that rod's been. Oh, and this one came up. Oh, no, I didn't. He's still on there. I thought I lost him there for a minute. And this little rod gets a pretty good bend with the four pound test. I, I, I don't think this fish is huge, but he definitely got this little rod going. What do you think, Ron? Oh, that's a nice one right there. Come on up out of there. There we go, all right. He's a giant. He's a giant. <laughs> we got swim baits bigger than this for summertime, but that's okay. So what I've done, I've got the little jig. I let it go all the way to the bottom. So now you can see there's slack in the line. Now I'm just gonna lift it just a little bit and I'm just gonna hold it there. So now I'm like a foot off the bottom. I don't know how deep the water is. It really hasn't been relevant because We've caught fish out here in the deep hole, which is somewhere around the 15 foot range. We've caught fish all the way over there on the other side of Ronnie in the shallow hole, which is only about seven or eight feet deep. So it hasn't been a huge deal, but what has seemed to matter is that the bait be fairly tight to the bottom. So I just dropped it down there. I'll give it a little wiggle here and there, but basically dropped it to the bottom a couple of turns up and, uh, and let it hang there. 
Boom! And Ronnie's on. The float strikes again. Yeah, now the float gives you depth control, and that seems to be important. Nice catch right there. Now that's, that's a nice one, one huh? right there. That's a pretty fish. I'm gonna come over here and join you because that's a nice one. That might be the biggest one of the day right there, Ronnie. Now it figures that that I wouldn't catch the biggest fish of the day because I know the least about what's going on here, but Ronnie knows what's going on here, and that's evident in that catch right there. And we got somebody playing, we might end up with a double right here. But uh, Great well, catch, Ronnie. Beautiful nice fish. Chunker. For the lake we're on, that's a really nice fish. There and there's, there's another the one right there. And uh, now we're both fishing the gulp minnows. And this guy, we'll bring him up and join that one on the ice here. I'll try to get him up here as quick as all. Oh, we got a little brown, too. Ah, Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Let's see if I can get to my hands here and we'll get him off. Nice. Double. Mine's escaped. Yours has escaped. That's just as well. There's the matching pair. There's the brown right there. That seems nice. like a good thing. We'll put them in the same hole. They can go be buddies. Friends. See ya. <laughs> so, basics of ice fishing. You saw it right here. We're on Dowdy Lake. Very simple. An ice auger, a couple of ice rods, an ice scoop, and gulp minnows. That's it. Very, very simple. Ronnie, thanks very much for taking us yeah, out. Yeah, it's been a blast, yeah. Showing us what's going on. If you guys are interested in fishing with Ronnie, look us up on Facebook at Fishful Thinker or at FishfulThinker.com. Ronnie's going to be guiding with us this year uh, for 2011 here at Fishful Thinker, so maybe we'll get a chance to get out and uh, do some fishing on the open water with Ronnie. Once again, we appreciate you bringing us out. Most importantly, we appreciate you guys joining us here. As always, we hope it encourages you to get out and try it yourself. I am absolutely no ice fishing expert, and yet we caught the fire out of them today. So good stuff. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Oh, that one screamed away, but I missed him. But boy, did that, did that bobber just absolutely shoot. Okay, Ronnie, hook, hook sets are free. If I had to carry wax worms or something out here, I'd have to go get them alive. Then I'd have to keep them alive. And of course, the, the old deal is you got to keep them in your mouth so they stay warm. And I don't want to fish with a mouthful of wax worms. Oh. No way, dude. You pulled that thing hard. Man.